Could you imagine going into space in an elevator? It sounds like stuff of the Jetsons, but Obayashi, a Japanese construction company, says it can get you there by 2050. Hopefully not traveling the whole time. It'll only apparently take seven days to get there um, in an elevator. It could have up to 30 people all at once and go up um, almost 100,000 kilometers into space. That's insane. I didn't even think the physics were possible until we read the story. But, exactly. But so why is it that now it's theoretically possible? We didn't think it was before, but it turns out that the answer lies in the advancement of carbon nanotechnology. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty fancy stuff. So Mr. Ishikawa, the R&D manager at Obayashi, stated the following. The tensile strength is almost 100 times stronger than steel cable, so it's possible. Now, at the moment, they can only make uh, nanotubes that are about three centimeters long. They're not long enough to construct this, but they expect to be able to make them long enough by 2030. And to be fair to the company, it's not just them saying, oh, we can do this. A major international study in 2012 came and said, hey, this is actually possible. It is actually possible. And most interestingly, I think the approach they're taking is, is it's a long-term vision. They're looking to cooperate. They're looking to work with other companies. And I think we look at stuff like this. I mean, probably 50 years ago, there were things that we said were literally impossible, virtually impossible. And, and now they're here. And so 2050 will be a very different world. But I'm, I'm just amazed at, at the, <laughs> the actual construction of something like this, <laughs> the fact that it would actually work. But the impact on the on industry and on space travel and on space development is is quite big. Um, the absolutely. numbers were actually really fascinating. The numbers are absolutely fascinating. So it has a potential to radically transform space ex exploration, of course, but also the global economy. So currently, we're severely limited um, in how we explore in space because of the gravitational well. It's incredibly expensive, difficult, and dangerous, actually, to launch things into space. I mean, you're essentially exploding things and hoping that they make it to space. And, there, and it takes up a lot of fossil fuels to break that gravitational wall. But with this particular particular structure, if it's cheap enough to do, which they're saying it, it'll be 100 times cheaper per kilo to get something into space. That's right. I was surprised to learn that 20, it costs about $22,000 per kilo right mm -hmm. now to get things up into space. With this, it would cost $200 per kilo. Huge That's insane. Huge difference. So what this means is that we could take the parts up into space um, in this elevator and build the ships outside of the, of the strong gravitational force of the Earth, which means we wouldn't need as much fossil fuels to launch something once we're already um, um, you know, 100,000 kilometers up in, t in the space. Right, it, right. It would drastically change everything. We could visit the moon potentially. Wow. In you an, and I, I in mean, a, in, in an like elevator. years, in an elevator. Only seven days. Pretty cool. <laughs> awesome trip. How do you feel about the aesthetics of this thing? I mean, it's, it's really cool physics-wise. Uh, the construction is amazing, but I mean, do we really want like a massive thing sticking out of the Earth like that? It's a little bit weird, right? It is weird. I take it, yeah, the aesthetics aren't great, but frankly, I don't care. I feel like the potential for advancement is absolutely worthy of having some, you know, toothpicks sticking out of a sandwich earth. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the next version of the shitty skyscraper that ruins the skyline of a city. Like, but this is going to ruin the skyline of the earth. They'll ruin the sky, but we'll get the access to many more skylines. Think about that. That is really cool. What's also fascinating to think about is how it will change um, other industries, right? So, for example, it has the potential to impact nuclear wastes or solar energy, many different industries. Just really radically change the way we live and the way we think. But let us know what you think about this. This. Do you think it's feasible or, or do you think it's kind of like flying cars? We said it was going to happen, but it won't really happen. And if it does happen, are you willing to hop into that elevator and press up? Let us know in the comments below and remember to subscribe to Lit TV. Could you imagine going into space in an elevator? It sounds like stuff of the Jetsons, but Obayashi, a Japanese construction company, says it can get you there by 2050. Hopefully not traveling the whole time. It'll only apparently take seven days to get there um, in an elevator. It could have up to 30 people all at once and go up um, almost 100,000 kilometers into space. That's insane. I didn't even think the physics were possible until we read the story. But, exactly. But so why is are. it that now it's theoretically possible? We didn't think it was before, but it turns out that the answer lies in the advancement of carbon nanotechnology. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty fancy stuff. So Mr. Ishikawa, the R&D manager at Obayashi, stated the following. The tensile strength is almost 100 times stronger than steel cable, so it's possible. Now, at the moment, they can only make uh, nanotubes that are about three centimeters long. They're not long enough to construct this, but they expect to be able to make them long enough by 2030. And to be fair to the company, it's not just them saying, oh, we can do this. A major international study in 2012 came and said, hey, this is actually possible. It is actually possible. And